So I'm here with Catherine Williams, flutist, um, who is uh, based somewhere outside Manchester. Is that right, Catherine? Up from Manchester. Up from Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, um, sadly, you can't be with us tonight, but um, so we've done a little pre-recorded chat about your contribution to the Clementi album. Thank you for talking to me today. I wish I could be there in real life. I can't believe that I have a clash because there's been nothing for so long. I'm going to be playing a circus themed concert in <laughs> Bridlington, so north of Hull. I don't know, that feels like it resonates with Clementi, doesn't it? A circus theme? <laughs> yeah, actually, I need to dress up as a snake charmer. Oh, good, good. Well, who wouldn't I, want to do that? <laughs> my heart will be in London. <laughs> um. So the Clementi album, in fact, came about, I think, partly because you wrote to us with this idea of um, recording Ouverture. Um, Is that how, you, how I'm meant to say it? Sorry. Actually, I have no idea why I'm saying it with a Fran French accent. I love it. Ouverture. I don't know. It doesn't look very Italian, does it? Um, I wanted to know how you discovered this piece and what it is about the piece that drew you to it. Sure. Well, I discovered Clementi on an Ives Ensemble album, the Madrigale. I loved it. I just kept listening to it over and over. And I thought, what's he done for flute? And lo and behold, there's an album called Works for Flute, uh, played by Roberto Fabriciani, who was a dear friend of Clementi's and I think all of the music was written for him. Um, and so I found this overture and um, well, I like them all, but I think Overture was a, a special thing because I just, it it just kept haunting me. Not in like a bad way, but in the thing that was just always in my head. And um, the way I kind of, I was doing lots more listening then because I couldn't play very long. That's when I was like super ill and waiting for my operation on my nose. And um, so just listening a lot more and, um, was obsessed with it for a while and then um, I kind of thought it was in the back of my head I wonder what it would be like to play that one day I tried to get a hold of the score and as we all might know then it's kind of tricky publishers don't really want you to look a perusal score costs a lot of money so I just reached out directly to Roberto and he arranged for me to get a copy of the score in the post oh I didn't know that that's a really nice story and then, actually, that's when I saw you. I took it to Roymore with mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. um, thinking, oh, I'll learn it when I have a little bit of time away from the family, just sit and play my flute for a while. But I just couldn't get my head around it because <laughs> uh, there's, like, no time signatures, there's no bylines, and, of course, it's 12 flutes, so three quartets in canon. Uh, and I couldn't, didn't really know where to start or what really, how would you play it live? I don't think you would play it live. So I thought, well, this is a recording project. And then I reached out and then, well, that was about three years ago. Um, as you, as you mentioned, it was written for Roberto Fabriciano and uh, Fabriciani and he, he has recorded it, hasn't he back in 2004, I think. So how, how much was your interpretation shaped by that recording where did you where did the deviations come from if you like what what ideas did you have about how to do it differently well I think that I wanted something that was a little bit less intense as a listening experience um, I think the binaural treatment does that a lot just by itself spacing it out so um, I think without that it would be very it would be pretty similar although I tried to avoid using very much vibrato at all and I was just trying to make a very pure sound um, just almost like almost like an organ stop or something that's what I had in my head anyway when I was practicing it like how mm. is this it going to be exactly in tune how is it going to be just clean lines because it gets messy by itself so I didn't want to want to add too much of my own sort of heavy handed interpretation if that makes sense but I'll, I also thought if I just lighten up on on the long notes it was just proper ensemble playing just seeing it as as this being one of 12 voices all the time and getting out of the way uh, for the other ones to come through 
And how did that work in practice in the studio? Because I, I totally understand what you mean about proper ensemble playing, but then, but then in the studio, you're not, you're not part of an ensemble. So how did, how did that work? Uh, well, first of all, I was, I was pretty anxious about the amount of D flats in it because <laughs> it's a very vulnerable note on the flute because you haven't got, you only got the tiny pinky down. So it really is down to how you're blowing and there's like nothing stopping the air. It could do anything. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I had a, I had a drone for when in one ear and then I had a, a, a click as well because it has three different tempos through as it goes through. Um, I, well, each line is it's not too long, so I would never be recording for more than a, a minute or two at a time. So that was good. I could just keep these <laughs> a bit fresher. Um, what else happened in the recording? It was definitely a long day. Uh, I remember that. <laughs> the, the 12 lines and then each one done three t three tempos and then I think if I could do it again I'd do the slowest ones first. Yes. <laughs> rather than leaving whilst you're fresh. Like, Whoa. <laughs> a loud um I was also 8 months pregnant during the recording so that, so that extra whole, support, whole, let's say. <laughs> yeah, all the level of um, concentration necessary. Um, I, I always feel that there's there's something about your your work as a performer which is um, let's say embracing the challenges and I really love that I love that about what you do um, your recent project for example coming up for air confronts that really head-on all about the thresholds of possibility what are the particular challenges um, within overture and where does this where does this love that I perceive anyway of um, embracing challenges come from for you? Hmm. Well, um, I think that the love of challenges has come from facing difficult times that were literally going to be stopping me from playing um, anymore. So. Um, that's where the coming up for era started which is say well what can you do in one breath and then it's of course tumbled into this big thing and i i love the um, marina bromovich quote which is i test the limits of myself in order to transform myself so i find i'd like to find these areas that might be too difficult and then just focus on them like almost too much until it becomes its own thing is that that sort of tiny focus becomes this whole thing but I think in the in the Clementi, it's well the piece for me represents something that I have a, I adored th through challenging times, um, so it was a really nice thing for me to be able to put my own interpretation of it out there, and I think it's the concentration and the stamina and the for me per, on a personal level the documentary of this time in my life when I was so pregnant in lockdown we, at that point we could only leave the house for work um and mm -hmm. like it, for for me it's like it's just this really lovely document of of a specific time it's not quite as hard as picture size <laughs> where i exercise and play the piccolo at the same time <laughs> but for me it's this challenge to try and make this beautiful resonant sound at all times so if you if you were to take away one of the lines and just listen to it on its own, it would be a beautiful object too. And I think I do you like would... proper flute playing. I know I've done some <laughs> weird things, but I, I love tone. <laughs> well, it's and the recording is absolutely beautiful. It's um yeah, I'm I'm so pleased that we were able to put this album together and that, that it includes your piece, which is, as I said at the beginning is kind of really one of the reasons that the album came together at all. So well, thank you, Catherine. Thanks for, thanks for being honor. bold. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for uh, supporting it. <laughs>